it's been rough. It's been rough. Um, I slept and I woke up today and I was just, I was just thinking. I was just thinking to myself. And I just said to myself that, is this the beginning of the end for Chelsea? Like, is, are we seeing a decline here for, for, for Chelsea? Because next Tuesday could be pivotal for the future of Chelsea, based on, you know, really what happens and so forth. But I'm just taking everything into account. And I'm saying to myself that, forget about making an argument. Forget about making an argument. You see, for me, I speak in absolutes. I'm a Sith. <laughs> That's right. I'm a Sith. I, I, I speak in complete absolutes. Forget about making an argument. Chelsea are experiencing the worst season for a club. Take everything into account. In terms of money spent and outputs, this is the worst season I've seen of any club. Because there's no club in history that, have, that has spent $600 million in a transfer window and are currently sitting 11th in their league. It's madness. It's madness. Like, it is so crazy. I put my conspiracy cap on. I, I put that conspiracy cap on. I'm like, oh, is this like some kind of an inside job? <laughs> like, has someone placed an agent? Is Todd Bully some hand of a double, triple, quadruple, sextuple freaking American agent here to destroy and dismember everything Chelsea? Because the amount of L's that Chelsea have taken has been astronomical. Like, I've never seen anything like this. Bro, okay, remember, man, so, beginning in the 90s, late 90s. Late 90s, 6th, 7th, 6th, 7th. But quality football. Quality football. Shout Zola, shout Desai, shout um, Viali, um, Gospoye, Petrescu, and, and so forth. Babayaro, shout out to those guys. The quality of football. But what you have here is a complete mess. No direction. You're on your third manager right now. And any manager who comes in, it's everything, everything has already been set. Because you see, the this because this is just why it's so scary. Any manager that comes in, you've got to work with these guys already. There's a thing called FFP. And these numbskulls have put guys on seven-year blood-packed contracts. Meaning that you've got to play them, you've got to use them. <laughs> because they're on seven-year contracts on high wages. So, because this is something that I shouldn't even be saying. It goes without saying. Player acquisition is very important. Because you see, I'm old school. I'm old school. You know? So some of you new school guys, you're actually educating me. Because me being old school, my thing is if I'm the manager of a team and I am a managing a team, so I'm responsible for those players, the score, and then producing results. I have to be fully in the loop with regards to whoever is coming in. That can just be left to someone. Because what happens is, okay, you've got a sporting director who has who scouts talent. My philosophy is 4-3-3. So let me just talk to you. Trust me. 4-3-3. I like to go through the same answer. I want to have a number 10. And I want to have very good technical players that keep the ball on the on the ground. And guys who are very good on the ball can dribble and are, and are very smart and technical as well. You no, know, two to footed, pretty good, good, good as well. And I like my defenders to be very old school, cool on the ball, but very old school and really no good rudimentary to defending. And also my right back, left back, I want them to also be wing backs as well, so, so they're very good going forward and can, and can cross the ball. Also, th throw me in a, in a DM as well. So I have this idea. So once I have this idea, 
the scout is the scout is with me in saying, okay, four three three. These kinds of players, we are tracked tra through the center in number ten. These kinds of defenders, this kinds of right back and left back. So he will then go to his scouts and so forth and says, "This is what the manager's tactic is. These are the characteristics that I need you to look for." So the scouts will go to South America, they'll go to Africa, they'll go to Asia, they'll go to Europe, and they'll be looking for players who fit these characteristics based on the formation that I have I've given. So when they now give me that shortlist, said, "Look, these are the guys here." They've not done this arbitrarily. They've given me these names that I don't know, but they've given me these names based off of the formation and the philosophy that I'm bringing into the freaking team. That's how I think it should work. But what you have with Chelsea is, you got some guys that took a wanted, Sterling Aubameyang, then you sacked him. You bring in Potter. These players you brought for Potter I'm now being told that Potter had um, nothing in there because what is this is what is so scary. Tuchel wasn't a yes man. He was like, no, I don't want to sign him. I want to sign him. No, I don't want to sign him. So because he has a manager with the ability to say yes and no, because he's earned the right to say yes or no, he gets sacked. But Potter, who cool, you've got no skin in the game. You've done nothing. You've done nothing of nothing in the game. You have no, you have no platform to say yes or no. So you bring in a yes man and just don't place upon him due to data analysis. But have you has Potter told the scouts that this is my formation, this is my philosophy, these are the characteristics and the attributes of players that I want, so I can, I can form a team that has chemistry and feeds off of one another. No, you've just bought players based off of who's hot, who's interested, and who's trending on Twitter, and just dumped it onto Potter. <laughs> that's stupid so what you have now is a bunch of guys that were under Tuchel a bunch of guys that were is it Potter stroke Bolly stroke the data analysis team doing it arbitrarily and now when a new manager comes in he's not going to run different players because if Enrique or Nagelsmann comes in they'll be like well they, they, I don't have Tuchel's philosophy I don't have Potter's philosophy I don't have Lampard's philosophy this is my philosophy, so I now want a whole bunch of different players. So the squad gets even bigger. So it leads me to believe that this has to be an inside job because you can't be this incompetent. You can't be this stupid. You cannot be this stupid. Because in the space of a few months, you have destroyed Chelsea. Because here's the thing. It's not about having. It's not just about having money and spending money. It's how you spend that money. And this is what I always say. This is like the the quote. It's not about buying amazing players or really good players. It's about buying the right players. A group of eleven outstanding players. These players are outstanding. They have no real chemistry. These players are outstanding. They can't function as a team. But a bunch of you know pretty good players. Not as good a man, man as other team, but pretty good, good players. But if they work well as a team, they'll always be the, the group of in individuals. Portugal against Greece. Euro 04. Greece beat them twice. Man for man, Portugal were better than any, any guy in that Greece, Greek, Greek team. Man for man. But as good as Cristiano was, Manish was, Deco was, um, Cristiano was, and so forth, Rui, Rui Costa, as good as they were, the um, um, the way that, again, I, 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 I think it was Otto Rehago, the way that Otto Rehago got these Greek guys together to play as a team within chemistry and so forth meant that they functioned better as a team than these other guys. So you have to create a team. Chelsea haven't created a team They've created a bunch of individuals, a bunch of expensive, overpriced, sorry, over, over, overpriced individuals. Chelsea haven't been scoreless in four consecutive games since 1993, December 1993. 
you put down this seven seat that could go up to 100 mil on Modric, a guy who is unproven, a guy who is unproven. 100 mil. Take, take, take 40. Take 40 or 50. Tell your scout to go to South America. Go watch Boca Juniors. Go watch Independiente. Go watch River Plate. Go to Brazil. Go watch Flamengo. Go watch Corinthians. Go watch Palmeiras. He can, he can come back with a quality striker or inside forward that can give you goals for 20 to 25 mil. You see, for me, because it will pain me and I'll be so angry, I don't actually want to look at how much Alvarez cost. I know someone I know someone will tell me in the comments below. I'll try and ignore it, but someone will tell me in the comments below because I don't even want to look at how much Alvarez cost. Because, guys, the ITS is undefeated. If you show me footage of Alvarez for River Plate and Modric for Shakhtar Donetsk, why the hell am I paying one cobble for Modric? over a guy who, when you look at what he was doing for River Plate and how he's playing, I'm like, oh, no, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, pay him. And for that dude, remember, Alvarez, do you know why he was cheap? No hype. He wasn't on Twitter. No one knew about him. Unless you really knew South American football or something, no one knew about him. Because that's, it's, you have a formation you have a philosophy, you have the characteristics of players that you want, and then you hire quality scouts. Because you know what quality scouts do? They get you gems that no one knows about. And because no one knows about them, you don't have to pay a higher price for them. The more someone knows about them, the higher the price is. Because if a guy is highly desired and highly sought after, there's a bidding war. But if no one, nobody knew about Alvarez, he wasn't trending on Twitter like Modric and on so forth. So because you have good quality scouting, no one knows about this guy, but he's good. He's good. Not every quality player trends on Twitter. <laughs> there, are, there are outstanding talents right now in Africa, in South America, the age, there are outstanding talents right now that no one knows about. They're just waiting for the right scout and the right eye to try and find them. And you know what a great scout does? See, I'm old school. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't need this. I don't need this. I don't need school school. I need to, I don't need to go in here to be like, oh, the data and the XG and so forth. Do you know what a, a great scout is? And this is what Todd Bowling needs to understand. A great scout uses this. This player, this 16-year-old, oh, he's rough around the edges. Yeah, his control, his decision making, he rushes too much into here, he overruns the ball. But I see something here that if we can take him, teach him this, 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 and this, and he trains on this specifically, give it four, five, six months, give it maybe off a year, he's going to become an outstanding player. But he just doesn't have the right coaching. He's not been given the right instructions. He doesn't have the right environment to take him from here to, to here. But because of that eye test, I can see this raw talent that can be refined into a top-tier, world-class tier one talent. That's what great scouting does. The issue with Chelsea right now is it's a mess. It's a, to it's a total mess. Like Todd Bowley, you just got here. You don't understand football. I told you my second favorite sport is the NBA, is basketball. So I'm probably look, NBA players right now, I'm in. NBA players this is where I'm in. So I because I watch basketball, I've, I've, I've played basketball. So me knowing basketball, I know that these are two very different sports. In basketball, baseball, and so forth, data analysis is paramount. Data analysis is paramount. In basketball, a guy's his three points average. Two points average. How good he is um, um, on the inside. How good he is on the outside. Blocks, steals, so forth. These are things that you need to take into account. For football, it's a balance. It's a balance of some of that data, but you have to use the eye test. The eye test is way more. Um, it is way more crucial in football than it is in basketball. 
the eye test. I think I don't think there's any other sports that requires the eye test more than football because football there's so many intangibles and the reason why we love the sport so much is because it is it is so complex. One plus one isn't equal to it is such it's such a difficult sport. It's such a hard sport to, to, to master. It is such a hard sport to master playing wise and coaching wise because it is this mystery that people are con continuously learning again and again and again. That's why we are so obsessed with it because we can never fully crack it. We can never fully crack the true mystery of how do you win every single game? How do you create the perfect for formation? How do you have the perfect player who can be fully consistent? You can never ever crack it. So the ISIS is critical because the ISIS, those are the intangibles that are needed. So I don't know, man. I don't know. I just I just don't know whether this is this is a decline for Chelsea. Look, see what happens on Tuesday. I don't want Chelsea in the conference league, so finish tenth, eleventh, it is what it is. It's been embarrassing. Come the new manager, it's it's really it's this is what it depends on. And this is the reality. Can the manager walk with the bulk of the squad? You can't spend another 600 mil. You, you, you just can't, <laughs> you know. So can the manager walk with Madueke, Enzo, Badeshele, Modric, and all the... Can you walk with these guys? With a few more to come in? That has to be the reality. If not, then it's problematic. So... What's a complete and utter mess? Subscribe. Hit that video over there, man.